Hi, I'm Nicole Goodnow and I am a second grade teacher and I'm here today to talk about how to use Smart Notebook 11 and creating some interactive lessons and activities with you. Um, you can go ahead and refer to page 31 in your learner notebook to get more information on the techniques that we are going to talk about. Over here to my right is our page sorter and what I'm going to do is go down to the second slide and we're going to talk about creating a hide and reveal activity. Here's a few examples or techniques for revealing information with your students. The first example is called Move and Reveal, which is exactly what I'm using right now, where you take an object and you move it to reveal an answer. The second technique is called Order and Reveal, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we move on. And then finally, the Erase and Reveal technique, which is one of my favorites working with elementary students. So let's go ahead and go to our page sorter and go to the next slide. Here's an example of the three options that I've just talked about. Our question that we may pose to the students is, where is King Tut's tomb? The first example to show this answer can be done with the move and reveal technique. So what we'll do is we'll touch the object, which is a red rectangle, and move it off to the side, and then it shows our answer, which is the Valley of the Kings. How that was created, was taking a red object, which is a red rectangle, which you can find up in your tools panel, and then coloring it with red ink. Our second uh, technique is called order and reveal. And this technique, you are using the white background that you see, and you are using a white text that is on top of the background. You can take the object, the colored object, and go ahead to move it and slide over the answer, and you will see the answer written in white. This is the layering technique, and that is why when you move it, you can see the white font coming through. The third example is called Erase and Reveal, and there are two different ways that you can do this example. The first way is by picking up your eraser in the pen tray. What you can do is erase over the top to see your answer. Another way that you can achieve Erase and Reveal is by going up to your toolbar, clicking on the eraser, which is in the bottom right-hand corner. It brings up a contextual panel, and I'm going to select the largest eraser because it erases more space. You can then use your fingers to erase the rest of the answer. The way that you can achieve this is by going up to your tools panel, or your tools, in your toolbar to your tools panel, clicking on the pen option, and then going on over here to the color palette, choose white digital ink, and you can see over here we've used it before, so you also have that option below. Going back into your slide, and then coloring over. Now one area that you should be aware about is when you're coloring, if you're not coloring enough space, you can click down on the drop down menu, click onto the Line Styles tab, and you can choose the thickness of what you want to do when you color. And that just covers more space. So these are three different examples of hide and reveal techniques. One was the move and reveal, one was order and reveal, and one was erase and reveal. Would you like to see some additional techniques? Great! We're going to go over to our side tab, and we're going to click on the paper clip, which is called the Attachments tab. And in the Attachments tab, you have an additional file that you can actually link to all of your SmartBoard presentations. Today is going to be additional techniques for these activities. The first example is called Erase and Reveal. This is something that I may use working with uh, lower elementary students. It may be in a science lesson, so the question I might post is, what is a food chain? I have a discussion with the students, and then what we could do is go ahead and Erase and Reveal. And again, there are two options. You can take your eraser from the pen tray. I'm going to click on the Select tool just in case. Here we go. You can take your eraser from the pen tray and go ahead and erase the blue ink that was drawn over the top of the background slide. Students like this because it's a lot of fun. Another way that you can achieve Erase and Reveal on a slide like this is by clicking on the eraser in the tool panel and then choosing again your different sizes. So I'm going to choose the size that's on the right, it's the largest size, and I can go ahead and then use my fingers to erase the rest of it. 
That is the erase and reveal technique. So we're going to move on. We're going to go to a new slide in my page sorter tab. Slide number two. This is called order and reveal. And this is a uh, lesson that you may use if you're working with um, upper elementary or maybe even middle school. In this lesson, you'll be investigating the parts of an animal cell. And how this works is there are some objects on a white background, objects that you can find up in your galleries tab, which is located on the right side tab bar and placing those objects inside of this slide. How this can be achieved is by using white ink on top of the white background and then taking your object, and if you cannot click on it, you must make sure that you're on the select tool, clicking on your object and then moving it on top of what looks like to be on top of the ink around the animal cell. So as students are giving answers, you can go ahead and highlight the answers for them. This again is done by layering. So you're going to have a white background, your ink will be white, and then your object will be in between both of those layers. We're going to move over to the page sorter tab. We're going to go to our final activity, and that is using the screen shade as part of your reveal. I'll show you how to do that. This slide was pre-created and it's about 18th century scientific discoveries and how you can use the screen shade tool is by going up into your actions panel and locating the button on the bottom row or the tab that looks like an old screen projector and pushing it. Once you push it you will have a gray shade that you can maneuver to showcase different parts of your slide. You can move it up or down or you can move it right to left. This is a wonderful activity to do if you want to pace a discussion and have kids be excited about something that they learn or making predictions. That's an example of the screen shade and how to use that. What we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our other presentation. I'm going to go ahead and go to the page sorter area and then use my scrolling bar. I'm going to come down to slide number four and what we're going to do is we're going to discuss creating, why it's important to create hide and reveal activities. Why would we want students to have, why would we want to hide information to students before talking about it? Excellent, yes. A wonderful way that we can create in excitement about learning is, is, stu is stimulating student thinking. Students get excited, they want to give the answers right away, but hiding the answers, have them focus back and maybe think a little bit more about what they're going to say. Another reason why we would want to hide information is because it adds interactivity to the lesson. It engages students. Like I said, students get very excited and they want to know. A third reason is to pace the discussion. As I said when we were using the screen shade reveal, you can slow down the discussion. If it's moving too fast or you want students to focus and slow down on certain parts of the discussion. The fourth reason is to show answers to questions, of course but you can do that in a lot of different fun and exciting ways. And I, finally, we can encourage collaboration, which is definitely a 21st century skill in um, education today. So these are some great reasons why we would want to hide information before talking about it. Using my scrolling bar, we're going to go down and I'm going to show you an erase and reveal technique that I have previously created. I might use this during um, response to intervention with a small group of students who are working on comprehension. And what I would do is I would have a short paragraph typed ahead of time. And then moving on from there, I'll show you how I would go ahead and do the erase and reveal. All of these words that are underlined, I want to cover. I want them to be able to figure out the answer. So I will select in my tools panel the eraser, which is on the bottom right side, and then select the thickness. Now I don't have a lot of space right here, so I may have to play around with the thickness, but I'm going to go ahead and try that one. I'm then going to take my finger, oh, I need to choose my pen color, so I'm going to go back to the uh, tools panel, click on the pens, make sure that I have pen selected, go over to the color palette, find the color that I want to choose and white it is, and then we'll try again. I'm able now to take my finger and go ahead and take that white digital ink and go right over my answer.
as a group then we would read this and students would volunteer different answers as to what they thought the answer in the blank would be. After a couple different choices, they could take the eraser and go ahead and go over the answer and we could see which student was right or if there was a better word. Again, you could use the um, eraser in the pen tray or if you want to use the toolbar, you can click on the eraser on the top. The contextual panel will pop up. You can choose the size of the eraser and then you or them can go ahead and erase to get the answers. So that was an example, a very easy one of erase and reveal. Here's what we'd like to do now. I'm going to go ahead to my scrolling bar, click on the next page, which is the blank page, because I'd like to give you opportunity to create an activity of your own. Thank you.